Hello everybody, welcome to another podcast, another session, another conversation with another inspirational educator. We have with us uh, Mrs. Pratima Sinha, who is the CEO of DSR Society. Uh, we'll talk more about her role at DSR, but before that, in her introduction, I would like to mention she's been a principal, she's been regional academic head of large organizations, educational organizations. Uh, she has led organizations like Meridian School and Hillside School, uh, you know, different curricula, right from IB to CBSC. She has actually impacted them all. Would love to, uh, you know, introduce her to you. And in fact, I'll request her to introduce herself for a second now. And then we'll take the conversation ahead. Welcome to the podcast, ma'am. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much. And thank you for the invite. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Our listeners would love to know about your life story. And, uh, you know, we would love to know how did it all really start? So uh, how did you decide to get into education? Where did, what was your first job? What was your first role? And yeah, so basically, how did it all start? So um, I became a teacher by chance and not by choice. You know, they always ask uh, whether you are yeah. a teacher by choice and many of them raise their hand by choice. Yeah. But uh, I started my journey in 1985. Uh, my cousin sister was opening a school in Hyderabad and she asked me that, would you like to join my school? Mm -hmm. And at that point of time, I was not working anywhere. I was uh, very young and I said, why not? Mm -hmm. And uh, this was 1985, Gitanjali school had wow. uh, commenced here and I joined that. Uh, and slowly I felt the call uh, of education as the journey began. I'm really thankful, you know, I had a wonderful mentor who guided me because I was not a BA, I was not an MA, I had no clue how to teach. And even to the extent of writing on the board, corrections in the notebook, to that extent, I was mentored by... Oh, wow. Lamory, uh, my mentor. So it was a beautiful, it has been a beautiful journey. I'm still in the process. There's so many things to do. Every day is a new day. Uh, but slowly, yes, I joined as a class one teacher. Uh, then every two years, I used to go to the principal and request her that, ma'am, I need to do something else now. Hmm. So hmm. that way, actually, I worked for 20 years in a school. But I was all over the place. Oh, wow. I taught oh, wow. different classes. Then I became a pre-primary coordinator. I also became headmistress and finally the principal. So Beautiful. that has been my journey and I think I've never looked back. Beautiful. And today I feel very proud of the fact that, you know, I have reached this position. Obviously, you know, what I, what I heard was that you've actually done that entire grind right yourself starting from the pre-primary teacher the uh, you know moving ahead uh, different sections different classes then saying okay now i've experienced the entire spectrum of how to teach different classes let me now try leadership so you started with middle leadership position as a coordinator moved ahead senior leader moved ahead head of school and now you are ceo of uh, an educational society so uh, it's very rare that we find people who have actually done that entire grind. Many times it's like somebody started as a teacher, felt the call for leadership, directly became vice principal and then a principal. So, you know, so it then, has helped me in the fact that I know what happens in pre-primary. I know yeah. what happens in primary. I know what happens in middle school. I know what happens at senior school level. And I Absolutely. know what happens in the administration side. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so it really gives me a, uh, it's given me a wide gamut of perspectives. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm sure that holistic perspective that you have of understanding when you move this one liver here, how the entire system would change, start behaving, yes. Yes. that would be so handy as and a I leader. And I think it helps the principals also working under me because yeah. they know that I will understand what they are asking for. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And many times people ask me that, what's the role of a leader? And I say the role of a leader is to make sure that everybody that the leader is leading is able to operate at their best with the help of the leader. Yes. So you are able to help others in becoming their best only when you know what their roles are. And I think that's what has really 
uh, what's been I your experience? The learning is not stopped because when we sit amongst the young teachers, I feel there's so much more to learn. Absolutely. So it's, it's definitely a, a very, very beautiful and ongoing journey that that I've gone through and I'm going through and will be going through till <laughs> such time. I'm in wonderful. The no, beautiful. I, I here's a here's a tricky question. So in this beautiful journey that you've had, did you ever for a day for some times feel that, oh, it's getting very tough and I want to quit? Did you ever feel like quitting? Uh, it has been tough. I mean, uh, you know, during such times that there were some students that I felt that I'm not able to help them or uh, during, you know, when you have to balance your family life and your professional life, there are certain commitments at home, hmm. certain commitments from school. But I don't think so. I ever thought of quitting it. Okay. So yeah. it never yeah. came to your mind, even no. even when it was at the bottom. See, every, Good. every, when it's a profession, right? I'm also yeah. a professional. Yeah. So yeah. when I think like that, I have to take everything in a stride. Beautiful. And why I asked that question was that when you look at the youngsters today, young teachers or young professionals in different fields, uh, it's like they carry a resignation in their back pocket. Yeah. Uh, they want to quit whenever the, the, the going gets tough you know that's that's the emotional balance that we need yeah. to really uh, find for ourselves so if right. we have confidence in us that we will be able to take it forward i don't think so one has to carry the res resignation letter with along with them yeah but that emotional balance is very important and how do how does one maintain that so as you as a leader today if you had to start as a teacher all over again and somebody came to you and said, uh, Pratima ma'am, I want you to help me with in running in my running my fifth standard maths class or whatever subject, subject doesn't matter. But let's say fifth standard class. And I want to just observe you your entire week that what do you do before school? What do you do after school? What do you do during the school so that I can learn and absorb everything that you're doing? And I can also lead a balanced life as a teacher, just like you are doing. What would your answer be? Uh, now, to be very honest, I don't know how patient I would be now. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure that my patience will run out because, yeah. you know, those days, yes, I was involved totally as a teacher. Absolutely. Absolutely. But now I'm not. I'm not in direct uh, teaching at all. So right. I don't know. If someone comes and asks me, I'll definitely try. But I, <laughs> yeah. am not, I can't say that I'll ensure that everything happens smoothly. I understand. But so let's let's reposition the question. So let's say if somebody comes to you and says, imagine 15 years ago or 20 years ago when you were that teacher, what did your life look like for a week that I'm able to take inspiration from that and I'm able to do the same things and able to maintain everything that I'm I want to maintain? What would the journey look like then? Well, I, I think that gyan I can give very well. <laughs> that I can definitely, you know, talk for hours. <laughs> of how okay. we used to, you know, work and mm -hmm. what kind of uh, commitment that we had. Um, that, yes, definitely. I'll just give you a small example. Uh, sure. I remember when I was uh, teaching in um, the senior classes, we were, uh, Wipro had come up with beautiful six months teachers training program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it was called as Wipro Applying of Thoughts. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, I'm talking about 25 years back. Uh, we were asked that if you want to take up this six months program, mm -hmm. you have to stay mm -hmm. back after school. Mm -hmm. And I did it. I used to teach the whole day. I used to stay back for three hours in school. And I took that six, six months program of Wipro. And I'm telling you that all that what we were taught at that point of time is what we are doing today. Wow. Wow. So this is what kind of that kind of commitment I feel that we had and we wanted, we had that passion for learning more. Mm -hmm. I personally feel that I was like an like a sponge, you know, who wanted to absorb more and more to give my right. best. Got it. But Got today, it. if we ask the teachers, of course, teachers are wonderful everywhere, but maybe because of their home commitments or whatever it is, I don't think so they're able to give that kind of time. Right. Of course, they right. have a lot of other, uh, you know, um, 
yeah they become uh, more involved in other things got it so on that note since we were talking about that what do you think what are the biggest challenges that a teacher today faces uh, what stops them from and i'm not saying it stops everybody but for some teachers who really you know get bothered by many things what stops them from reaching their maximum potential what are the biggest challenges that a teacher faces today see um challenges are everywhere the thing is what i personally feel and have seen through experiences that teaching is not taken seriously as a profession okay uh teachers who come even i went like that of course i mean i'm not mm-hmm. denying the fact i told you that i mm-hmm. i keep you as a chance so mm-hmm. those who do not get uh, jobs elsewhere or those who feel that you know they don't want to give that kind of uh, long hours of commitment to any other job they feel okay teachers job is very cool you get mm-hmm. you know summer summer vacation you get winter vacations and so on and they join in but they don't realize that they are mm-hmm. dealing with students yeah they are the yeah. ones who are molding the life of the students yeah. and that's where the challenge comes in that commitment that they have to give the passion yeah. using these two words again and again the passion that they has to come in for the job is you will not find it anywhere else you know it's not if you treat school as a corporate office Mm-hmm. where you know in offices people come people go people leave with the note it's not like that because the yeah. student you're dealing with relationships yeah yeah right uh, the student whom you are dealing with your viewers whose life you're touching right uh, without i mean for him you are everything the teacher is absolutely teachers absolutely all the teachers everything whatever the teacher says goes for the child so if you don't take it seriously then that's a challenge that's a problem uh, absolutely with you on that so that's the challenge that that commitment has to come in i mean it's Got not it. just walking in take i'll do some time pass and move out that's not what so the- so that's why that's why when somebody who has that kind of thought process or that background they wouldn't be able to do the best as teachers so which brings me to my next question which is exactly and, and connected I'll, to this i also like to add on teachers role sure. is not easy yeah, teachers absolutely. role is not easy at all and especially in today's world because they're multitasking teachers are multitasking today right. it's not, right. not not just about knowledge sharing they're also counselors they're also you know kind of motivators they're like i think they're wearing all sorts of hats Yeah so absolutely it's definitely a challenging uh, and I, I remember last time I met grade 11th and 12th students in my school and mm-hmm. I asked them it was a career um, program career related mm-hmm. program and I asked them now who wants to become a teacher Nobody. none of them raised their hands and <laughs> I was so depressed that day I said what is happening how do yeah. I motivate uh, children to take up teaching as a profession and you know that's one thing that uh, me and my entire team keep working on day and night so you know united nations sustainable development goal 4c is to have quality teachers for all and the speed with which the number of teachers required and the number of teachers available the gap the speed with which yes. the gap is increasing is scary so mm-hmm. one of the things that we do here at sarasa and at international teachers university is to make sure that we are able to inspire the next generations to become teachers and you know i think what really can help the entire cause is if we can demystify uh what really does it take to become a successful teacher and how can we uh how can we motivate the next generation to become those teachers who can uh you know drives uh success and drive uh respect for themselves so on that note if you had to hire let's say a teacher for your school and you know with all of those concerns all of those problems that we just identified uh that people are becoming by chance teachers by chance and then even if once they're becoming teachers by chance they're not looking at it as a serious profession they're not giving their 100% and, and at the same time there are teachers who come in and who just change lives of the student uh you know with some yeah. things that they say 
So what are those things that you do that you're able to identify the right set of teachers for your schools and you're able to judge them, you're able to identify those hidden gems from everybody who lines up to get hired by you? How do you identify that? So uh, my first and foremost this thing is uh, when I speak to the teachers is of course their communication skills mm-hmm. and a little bit about their background. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, um, how serious are they, they about the profession that they are entering into? And if I feel all, even though the teacher may not be experienced, even though teacher may not be uh, qualified, but I, if I see that spark in them, you know, of uh, building up something for themselves, I take them. Okay. And then it is my responsibility to see that they are trained uh, in the areas that we are looking at and they grow and and we like to grow our own, uh, you know, teachers. To yeah. no, beautiful. You know, yeah. that that's that's so amazing. You know, I was discussing with this um, another podcast I was recording with uh, another education leader uh, from Dubai. And uh, uh, the school leader said that, Rishabh, how beautiful it would be if we could grow our own teachers, you know, just like how in different parts of the world, people are growing their own food, people are growing everything that they want of highest quality. I would prefer that also. That's why I told you, (laughs) even if they're not experienced, may not be qualified, but I don't mind them, uh, you know, giving them that opportunity to uh, professional for professional development and also to see that where are the gray areas and let them grow in that and give them that kind of opportunity to to become better teachers. Right, right. I got that. So, so how would you identify? Let's say you said passion. You said you know somebody who has that that spark that they can they can really do what uh, it takes to be a good teacher. How do you identify that? How what can you share on that so that teachers or prospective this teachers is can? Experience I can. <laughs> but uh, but yes, um, the smile, you know, the facial expression, uh, the body gestures, the body language. Uh, you can make out that this person has come here for serious, you know, and they are looking at something for themselves and in the education field, uh, they may feel that, ma'am, we are not experienced or we don't have, but still we want to get into it. Ma'am, you just give us any kind of position and we are ready to do it. But yes, I will do whatever is uh, required. You know, that kind of, you can feel it. The body yeah. language, the way they speak, you know, the spark in their eyes, the smile on their face. It, it really uh, helps a lot. Now, the moment you said all those things that you observe body language and face expressions and everything, I suddenly wanted to sit straight and, you know, <laughs> not not express too much. I'm very good at it. <laughs> so, so, so uh, unlike most of my podcasts, I'll ask you here, uh, with these expressions and my body language, would you hire me as a teacher? Yes, I would. <laughs> I can see the passion from, in uh, you know, oozing out. Thank you so much. We'll go. We'll move on to the next uh, next part of the podcast. So, what I would really love to know is, you mentioned about the shortage of teachers, and we, I think, all of educators or education leaders who are looking at growing education uh, at scale have shared this thought with me. Have shared this feeling with me that we need next generations to understand what teaching and what school education is all about. So if you had to share something about teaching with the next generations so that they get motivated to get into teaching, what would you say? Uh, also, I'll mention that there will be a last part, uh, last part of the podcast. I'll also ask you to do a sales pitch to the next generation so that they buy the teaching profession, but not right now. Right now, we'll just discuss that. What do you think can be done so that the next generations can get attracted towards the teaching profession? Yeah. So what, uh, you know, when I speak to the teachers, I do a lot of training for the teachers and all. The first thing I say is first, know the student, know the person whom you're going to deal with. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Let's not get into the subject. Let's not get into the lesson. Let's not get into question and answers. First, give some time to the child or to whomsoever you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Once you get to know them, once you feel confident that you can deal with this group of students, 
that's where it's a you know cake walk for the teachers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the trust that you build up with them right they see senior students i i'm talking for i'll talk about the senior students sure. first there are teachers who have been teaching them for last 40 years 30 years 35 years today if you ask them to handle the students they are unable to handle now why is that hmm. because they don't understand today's student yeah. they don't understand today's generation Absolutely. they don't they want to just go to the classroom teach and come out but that is not what is required times are yeah. changing we need to change according to the times if yeah. i don't change uh, according to the time i tell the teachers you will become dinosaurs yeah right yeah. so you need to understand the need of the students you need to understand the situations you need to understand the challenges that they may be facing basically mm-hmm. you need to know the student first yeah right yeah. once you know the students then you will be able to take out extremely excellent work from them you don't have to struggle at all after that got it you know in my days when i was a teacher i remember i used to go and visit the parents houses wherever today that is happening and it's coming back as good practice that teachers should visit but on my own i mean we have to be very creative to find out or do something different do something new which which really makes the child happy about you know how you connected with yeah. them that yeah. building trust the connectivity knowing the student these are the three factors which definitely will help uh, you to start beautifully got it got it pre primary also again the trust factor comes in yeah seniors is different but pre primary again the child should be able to connect with the teacher so beautifully that she, the child if he goes to the teacher he knows that whatever his he wants the teacher will take care yeah and i think i would so agree because i think 99% of pre primary students or even primary grade 1 grade 2 students you ask them how many of you want to become a teacher i think 90% of them would want to raise their hand and say yeah. i'll become a te- i want to be a teacher which yeah. shows that they respect their teacher or they respect that that connection that relationship so much right now that they want to be the other person yeah. but then the moment the te- the students reach the higher education or senior secondary classes they're not able to see uh see the connection or feel the relationship and and i'm going to say it out but i don't want to mince my words but i so i'm going to say it and i think they don't respect the teacher as much as the teacher feels or wants to be respected and because they can't respect that profession they're not able to see themselves in that profession because at the end of the day so, so how do you get respect from the students right right that's yeah. also an art absolutely it's hard to get respect from the students you can't just expect that just because you're a teacher and you're going and teaching them uh, you know that is expected expectations have to be kept low Yeah. or if you want you if you have those expectations you have to clearly define them yeah. and work towards it absolutely right? absolutely only then you will be the children will be able to meet up to your expectations yeah yeah so it's always so, a give and take right everywhere yeah. it's a give and take and everywhere absolutely. it has to be a win win situation for both the sides absolutely so so i think it's come out so beautifully that uh, we just can't go and say because i've arrived respect me we got to earn our respect yes and with this next generation who's which is so smart which is so intelligent they have everything on a click of a button for them they can see through things absolutely and if they can see through things transparency is the best policy if you can be transparent and still get respect which means you have it in you that you can be respected we always tell our teachers if you don't know something because senior level children are doing ex- so much of research on their own yeah they yeah. know many a times they know more than what the teacher knows so yeah. i always tell the senior teachers it's okay to tell them ki i'm not sure about it you know i'll yeah. come back yeah. tomorrow and let you know rather Absolutely. than giving some wrong information because the child can see through you when you spoke about the transparent also this is also there the child knows yeah. immediately that yeah. you know man is just <laughs> doing something so this great, is where you know, the trust factor so what you know i'd made teachers training modules 
in that my first module is about knowing yourself yeah that is right. the first thing i would say when when you go get into teaching first you need to know yourself you know what skills you have what are the areas gray areas that you have which are the areas that you feel you can enhance more if you are confident about yourself then you can mm-hmm. you know, the you world, is, the world. Yours. the world is yeah. yours um Absolutely. second is know the student then know your school know your school means many teachers don't even know the the um, mission and vision of the school right. right know your school and then get into the pedagogies so this is the process Beautiful. that should uh, you know one should follow first Got know it. your school then know your students know the school and then go into the pedagogical part of it Beautiful. Beautiful. What we Thank do you is so much for sharing that. Jump into the pedagogical part. Pedagogic. <laughs> and then, and many times we don't even reach to knowing the student. We just say, now I know pedagogy. The student should now go and do what we want them to do. What we want them to do. Yeah. Beautiful. So I think we've come to the la- almost the last part of the podcast, where I re- I request you to wear a different hat today. Mm-hmm. I request you to become uh, a salesperson for. the sake of the next generations mm. uh you know all of these next generation of students uh, deserve high quality teachers which will be coming from the students who are either in senior secondary school or in universities today so if you had to go stand in front of an entire auditorium full of people who are deciding to pick up a career and you had to sell the teaching profession by sharing the features of the teaching profession what all happens and how a teacher's life is really worth living what would you say to these next generations that they look at teaching as one of the go to professions and they can choose that over to you ma'am see uh, educators are generally not marketer you know they're I not know. doing marketing <laughs> okay but um, when you ask me that uh, if i have to go on the stage and tell the hmm. teachers you know i would say if you want to be remembered for lifetime yeah. if you want to be remembered for lifetime you become a teacher beautiful because if you have done a great job as a teacher these children who have passed out from you from under your care will always always remember you wherever they are so that's the best part of being a teacher today i meet uh, you know uh, someone uh, at the airport and that person comes and tells me hi ma'am how are you today i become a doctor you know that's the feeling oh my goodness the yeah. child has uh, you know i have taught him in you know how teachers feel so proud about some small small things that the children do that's what is the beauty of being a teacher of wow. course great subject knowledge connectivity the 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 feeling that you know uh, this child uh, you are doing something for this child for his future and making him what he is today i think is the best part of beautiful beautiful i think i'm we are going to be taking this part out as well so we are we are planning to make a montage of all the different school leaders uh you know pitching the teaching profession and maybe start playing it in different places and uh, thank you so much and i think the first sentence you mentioned if you want to be remembered become a teacher for life that that just remembered yeah if you want for to life time remembered forever remembered for a lifetime yeah. become a teacher how many people oh yeah this is so beautiful uh thank you so much thank you so much for sharing your heart out with us today ma'am um, i think all of the listeners would love to come back to this episode again and again and you know feel the warmth that an education leader has shared about her journey uh, le- uh so I keep all the listeners... my principal also that if you don't have a english tip call me i'll substitute <laughs> even today i tell her whenever she says ma'am i need you know there is no teacher in this class you know call me i'll come and teach you know no, ma'am how can you come and <laughs> but you know that's how it is that's yeah. how it is that's the you call know. of being a, a, a teacher i would say yeah so once you become a passionate educator uh, and by chance you, it just becomes by chance <laughs> not by so, choice so so you became by so you started by chance but i can pretty sure say that you stayed 
by choice and you became what you became by choice so that's how it became so beautiful for you with that i'll close today's session thank you so much ma'am thank you so much to all the listeners and i'll be meeting you with another inspiring story another inspirational educator very very soon till then you take care of yourself bye bye